Hello, everyone, and welcome to At Barron's. I'm Andy Serwer, and welcome to our guest, Enon Kreis, CEO of Mattel. Enon, nice to see you. Hello, Andy. Good to be here. I know you're probably sick of talking about it, but maybe not. Barbie. I have to ask you about Barbie and the movie specifically. You talked about Barbie really benefiting the company in the second half of the year. Exactly how much has Barbie, the movie, helped Mattel in terms of royalties and in terms of incremental sales? We're always happy to talk about Barbie. Uh, we couldn't be more proud about the success of the movie. And what we've said is that in 2023 as a whole, the movie will, will add about $125 million of gross billings, a minimum of $125 million of gross billings at 60% operating income margin, which is $75 million or more in 2023. So the idea was to say, this is one movie in one year. And while not every movie will be a Barbie, in the aggregate, as we continue to execute on our entertainment strategy and capture full value from our intellectual properties, this in success will have a transformative impact on the company. What about incremental sales though? How much did it boost the sales of the doll so, and all the things that go so with it? So this, this number mm -hmm. aggregates all of the uh, Barbie related, Barbie movie related benefits. So mm. movie proceeds and movie related toy and merchandise. Okay, got it. Um, and yes, there's still people who need to see the movie like myself. I'm almost embarrassed to say I haven't seen it. So there's people still out there. What's the follow-up plan specifically with Barbie in terms of making it a tentpole franchise, more movies, more ways to have touch points for consumers? Well, without talking specifically about Barbie or the next Barbie movie, it's about building film franchises. This is part of our strategy to, to take our brands and continue to expand them outside of the toy aisle. And Barbie is the first, uh, the first of Mattel films. It speaks to the potential of our film strategy. And it's also a showcase in how we think the opportunity in front of us. The Barbie movie demonstrated that our brands have a cultural resonance outside of the toy aisle in appealing to broad demographics and not the traditional uh, people and, and fans who buy our products. It also shows how Mattel was able to engage, attract, collaborate, and amplify top creative talent, some of the most prolific filmmakers of our generation. And of course, it, it also, uh, where we were able to bring to bear our marketing and demand creation capabilities in taking what would have been a very successful movie release into becoming a cultural event, a societal moment that spoke to people uh, at an emotional level and created something very special in the industry. Earnings recently, Enon, have been good. Revenue guidance going forward has been a little muted according to Wall Street. Why is that? And isn't it going to be difficult to lap the performance of 2023 and 2024, given again Barbie? We had a very strong quarter, uh, both uh, in top line, in profitability, in margin expansion, in cash generation, and we raise guidance for our profitability uh, as well as, as uh, margin expansion. We kept our uh, gross bailing guidance uh, comparable to last year. This is because entering the year, we believe the industry will be uh, uh, flat to slightly up. And now uh, we're saying that we expect the industry to be down mid single digit. Uh, so in that context, raising guidance in the current environment, we believe uh, is a good thing. We do expect a strong holiday season. We expect to continue to gain share. We have done that. We've gained share in the third quarter and year to date, and we expect to do that in the fourth quarter and the full year. We expect to grow double digit in the fourth quarter for Mattel. So uh, all in all, uh, strong performance and continued uh, execution of our strategy within the toy side of the company, while we also do that on our IP strategy. Why, though, is the industry gone flat this year, and is it because of inflation? Well, industry uh, will, be, we, will be down, we right. expect to be down mid-single digit, and, the and, and this is in the context of the industry that, that, that grew between 2019 to 2022 by 22 percent. Mm. Industry grew uh, in, in, you know, at, at strong 22 percent and reached an all-time high in 21 and 22. So in, in, in that environment, or with that in mind, 
in the current environment, it, we don't believe that it speaks to any weakness in the industry. And we do expect the industry to continue to grow over time. The toy industry has grown for over 10 years. The toy industry is a growth industry. It, it, it plays to a fundamental human behavior. Children will always play with toys. Physical play is here to stay. Uh, it's, parents will always prioritize buying quality product for their children, uh, especially uh, with trusted brands. It's a strategic category for retailers. It drives food traffic. It's experiential. Every retailer has a toy aisle, uh, in mm -hmm. not just department stores, but supermarkets and pharmacies and gas stations. The, the product is affordable in terms of pricing. And we believe it's a, it has a very important place in, 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 in culture and in the economy. So we believe it's a great category to be in. And inflation is not hurting sales. Well, inflation uh, does impact consumer behavior. Uh, this is not just in toys, this is across the industry. And we did see inflation this year. So one of the factors that impacted uh, consumer behavior and, and shopping of toys, as well as other, other product, is the, the, the macroeconomic environment of, of, uh, of inflation, higher interest rates, and other factors affecting consumer behavior. And specifically with regard to this holiday season, you know, what are you seeing? What are consumers looking to buy? How are the patterns different? Well, obviously, we're still coming off the pandemic, so it's hard to normalize. Yeah, we, we expect the, the, the shopping pattern to revert to historical norms, which is more shopping towards the back end of the year. Uh, we've seen during the pandemic, there was different behavior of advanced shopping earlier in the, in, in the season. We expect this year that shopping will happen towards the very back end of, of the year. I want to shift gears a little bit. I want to ask you more about the company, but I want to shift gears a little bit and ask you about you a little bit. Um, you grew up in Israel, and I'm wondering what your take there is on the situation as a business person, as the CEO of Mattel. How have you felt uh, in terms of responding and how you feel U.S. business people should respond to something like this? Yeah, for me, it's, it, it is very personal. Uh, and like all of us, we've been following the situation very closely and wishing for a quick resolution and very importantly, the release of the hostages. And this situation continues to evolve, uh, continues to un unfold, and, and we all wish for a, a swift and peaceful resolution. Right. Well, let's, let's continue with a little bit along those lines in terms of the global footprint of Mattel then. Do you have business in, in Israel, and how many countries are you in then? Well, we sell product uh, all over the world. Mm -hmm. um, sales in the region, in Israel in the region, are not material to the company, mm -hmm. but we do, we do uh, sell our product all over the world. Mattel is a global company. Our products have been uh, in demand for, for decades, and uh, two and even three generations. And this is one of the strengths of the companies, that you have such strong portfolio of brands that, that, that have this heritage uh, value and connection with, 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 with the people all over the world. One of our own evolution, one of our evolutions uh, 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 or parts of, 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 uh, of how we evolve as a company, both culturally and how we think about what we do, is realizing that people who buy our product are not just consumers, they're fans. Mm -hmm. They're fans that have an emotional relationship with our product. And when you realize that you have uh, fans out there in the aggregate, it's an audience. And when you realize you're speaking to an audience, it changes the conversation. And, and this is part of our uh, uh, approach on how we continue to evolve and grow the company mm -hmm. and engage consumers with multiple touch points outside of the toy aisle. Not instead, but right. in addition to what we do on the toy side of the company. And this is the investment thesis of, of Mattel. You have mm -hmm. a toy business that is growing, that is uh, increasing uh, uh, cash generation, that we believe will grow in size and in profitability. And when you have a thriving <coughs> toy business and you continue to strengthen the emotional relationship with your fans, you can take your assets and participate in other verticals, highly accredited right. business verticals. Think. Uh, content, film, television, location-based entertainment, 
parks, digital experiences, consumer product and merchandise, music. In some cases, these industries are bigger than the toy industry, right. all driven by big brands, big franchises. And this is where we believe we have an opportunity to capture full value from our intellectual properties outside of the toy aisle and continue to grow uh, our business model. I want to ask you a little bit more about that, but just a little bit more on the global piece. China, how are your brands received there and are you manufacturing there and how's that going? Yes, we both manufacture and sell product in China and, and it's uh, going well without breaking the, the specifics. It's going well, it's an important market, it's a large market. But as a, as a company that has a, a, a global footprint, we make product in many countries. We make product in uh, multiple countries, in Indonesia, Malaysia, Mexico, Vietnam, um, uh, as well as China. And we have evolved our supply chain to be uh, very flexible and modular, where we have a very unique cost advantage that mm -hmm. we can uh, benefit from as, as a global player. And the uh, supply chain today is one of our competitive advantages. It used to be uh, more challenging, and now it's an advantage that helps us uh, both in terms of cost benefit and also in terms of our ability to respond uh, quickly to changes in, in landscape, in demand, and other uh, factors impacting uh, consumer behavior. I want to ask you about POS, point of sale. What's the breakdown between brick and mortar digital, and are you doing any direct-to-consumer? Yes, POS, uh, or, or as you said, the, the brick-and-mortar business uh, for Mattel is around 75% of our business. Walmart, Target, etc.? Yeah, we, we actually sell product in more than 500,000 stores, brick-and-mortar stores uh, mm -hmm. all over the world. The balance, the 25% or so balance is, uh, is online retail and e-commerce that is also uh, doing well. In some cases, you have the omni-channel retailers, Walmart and Target actually also have an online business, yeah. so uh, it, you, you traverse across every uh, opportunity to reach consumers wherever they are. We also have a growing uh, direct-to-consumer business that is uh, focused and specialized in uh, collectors, uh, collector products, uh, targeting adult uh, shoppers, adult, adult uh, uh, collectors, and it's going very well. Uh, mm -hmm. We sell product that is highly curated, um, uh, that, uh, that, 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 that is a premium product of Barbie, Hot Wheels, American Girl, uh, Monster High, Uno, and other uh, Masters of the Universe, and also Disney Princess, in, as a case in point, where we continue to grow our offering and, uh, and excite, excite uh, adult consumers that also look to engage with our product, not for play, but for collectability. And uh, that product is just exquisite. Uh, it's almost an art form. And in some cases, we actually do partner with artists that have their own uh, interpretation and expression of our product. We just recently uh, had a very successful campaign with Daniel Arsham for uh, Hot Wheels, a uh, very talented artist that, that had his own interpretation and expression of, uh, of, uh, of Hot Wheels which was very successful and sold out uh, almost instantly. You just talked about a lot of your brands and, and there's also Fisher Price uh, along with those iconic names. What are some things that would surprise people in terms of which ones are really doing well, um, different niches, different unusual things maybe? You know, the interesting things in our offering uh, can come from anywhere. Uh, and that is the beauty of, of what we offer. And, you have a portfolio uh, of, of, uh, of <coughs> assets or franchises that have uh, big, iconic brands that everybody knows. And then you have those that can come from left field, uh, especially on the movie side, for example, and, uh, and, and surprise and delight fans. So on the film side, uh, as an example, we have projects in development, uh, one of which is, is uh, Major Matt Mason, with Tom Hanks, that Major Matt Mason is a product that we have not commercialized in decades, yet it's Tom's, was Tom's favorite toy as a child. And this is the one that excited him. And we are now collaborating uh, with, with Tom, Tom Hanks, to, to develop uh, a movie based on that, that brand. Rock'em Sock'em Robots is another brand that we haven't commercialized in a while that we're now developing uh, together with Vin Diesel. And so you see, you have uh, brands that are known, 
that are thriving today, and you have heritage brands that still have a built-in societal impact in the fan base that can excite and delight fans uh, of all generations. I think you said you have 14 movies in development. And has it become easier to approach Hollywood given the amazing success of Barbie? Yes, I would say that the level of interest and engagement and uh, talent caliber has been nothing but uh, very exciting uh, since the, the success of the Barbie movie. It, 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 the Barbie movie did demonstrate how we approach the creative process, how much trust we, we offer our partners, our creative partners, how we believe and, and are open for creative interpretations of our brands. And then also amplify and promote and market and create cultural events and, and societal engagement with the movies that we are producing. So, uh, we believe we can offer something very special uh, for creative talent, uh, a home, a platform uh, that supports and amplifies uh, their creativity. I mean, you gave the filmmaker a tremendous amount of freedom um, for, for Barbie, including having Will Ferrell play you, making fun of you, my understanding is. What was that like? Well, uh, you know, we embrace self-deprecation and, and we believe in the, in the creative vision of our partners. In this case, Greta, um, uh, uh, Greta Gerwig's uh, vision of Mattel and, and the Barbie narrative uh, included her take on uh, Mattel as a company and uh, the CEO of Mattel. And I'm a big fan of Will Ferrell ever since the Zoolander days. <laughs> um, he's a great actor. I can learn a lot of things from him on the comedy side. He can definitely get away with a lot more than I can in terms of what he says, uh, but he's, he's, uh, he's a great actor and uh, all, part of, uh, all part of the play in supporting the narrative. You worked a little bit at Disney, worked with Disney a lot. What is your takeaway from working with those people and what can that company do to get itself back on track? Well, Disney is a great company and I admire many things about it. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it has done incredible work around its intellectual property and building big franchises. And we, we do take a page of how they evolved their brands and how they grew their business over the years. We often say that the analogy for our strategy is Marvel. Uh, not a one-for-one -one example, but a good analogy in that Marvel, Marvel started as a comic book publisher and evolved to become a very important uh, platform for creators and, uh, and, and, and uh, great movies and other execution of, of the franchises. And we believe we can do the same with our brands, with our franchises across multiple genres. You can start the journey being a, a comic book publisher or a toy company. And we believe starting our journey as a toy company is a good thing because toys, toys are tactile. Our fans, touch our product and hug our product. And that means that the emotional engagement, the, the emotional relationship that fans have with our product is at a very high level, which is a great place to start our journey as an IP company and continue to evolve that and create more experiences, much more touch points uh, across more categories and domains and continue to grow our business outside of the toy aisle. Any advice for Bob Iger though? Bob Iger doesn't need advice. He's a great CEO uh, and he knows exactly what to do and is, I'm sure he'll, he'll do the right thing. And I follow up on something you said earlier, um, Enon, and that is about events. What, what kind of events could Mattel do? Well, we, we are very excited by opportunities for us to create location-based entertainment and different events, uh, outdoors, indoors, and we've already done a few. Uh, there was a very successful Barbie exhibition, um, that, a traveling exhibition of, of uh, Barbie's history, different uh, product, different dolls, different uh, Barbie experiences. We're launching next year um, a, a Mattel theme park, a Mattel branded theme park in Glendale, Arizona, in partnership with Epic uh, Adventures, which is a real estate developer. It's a, it's a theme park that will be branded Mattel, uh, roller coasters and other rides and other experiences. There are Hot Wheels uh, traveling exhibitions. There's a monster truck show that moves around the country. And we have different opportunities that will grow in scale and expression where fans can engage and, and, 
and enjoy uh, their, that, that, that you know, different experiences, live experience with our brands. Why should investors buy or hold Mattel stock? Well, we are very focused on executing our strategy to grow Mattel's IP toy business and expand our entertainment offering. We've been executing on that strategy very successfully uh, for multiple years now and have been growing our toy business, which is now gaining share, gaining profitability and cash generation. And we believe we are very well positioned to continue to grow our toy business, both in gross billings and in profitability, as well as market share. On top of it, you have an incredible opportunity to capture full value from our intellectual properties that are very unique. We own one of the strongest portfolios in the world for children and family entertainment. And we still, even with the success of the Barbie movie, are still at an early stage of how far this can go. The Barbie movie is a great showcase, is a great template of what is the potential of, uh, of our intellectual properties and how much our brand resonates outside of the toy aisle. Having a movie that is now Warner Brothers' most successful uh, uh, box office release ever, uh, and a movie that is on track to become now the 13th most successful movie release of all times, um, is indicative of the quality, the strength, the appeal of our brand. And while we don't say that ev every movie will be the next Barbie, we absolutely believe that our brands resonate very strongly, uh, culturally, and in, in also in terms of societal impact. And, we'll be and we will be able to translate that to commercial success on top of what we do within the toy side of the company. Inan Cry, CEO of Mattel, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. This is At Barron's. I'm Andy Serwer. We'll catch you next time.